Hi, this is Sean Rutledge coming to you from the Oslo office of the Qt Company, and I'm here to tell you about something I've been working on during the hackathon in December 2017. I've been trying to add Markdown support in Qt. So your first question might be, what is Markdown? Well, this is what it looks like. It just follows the typical social conventions that you might have used in the past when you wrote an email and you wanted to add a little bit of formatting to it. So you wanted to make sections, maybe you put underscores under, or hyphens or equal signs under your section headings. Maybe use minus signs, asterisks, plus signs to make bullet points, things like that. So this is a standard, a standardization of this social convention which has been around for a long time. It's also very similar to Wikitext, which is what you'll see if you ever edit a page on Wikipedia, but Wikitext is more complex. Markdown is simpler. Um, if you edit a page on the Qt Internet Wiki, by default it uses Confluence Wiki format. By default, actually, you get a WYSIWYG editor, but that's what you're editing behind the scenes. But it has the ability to insert Markdown into the page as well, and then you get a preview of what that will look like rendered in HTML, and then you can insert it into the page. So the main focus was to be, was always to be able to generate HTML from Markdown, and GitHub uses it a lot. For example, almost every project has this readme.md file where you describe what your project is about and you can include screenshots and links to other things and so forth. Um, and sometimes people write other documentation in Markdown format as well. One of the common criticisms though is that Markdown started out as a very simple specification but then it's been implemented in a lot of different ways, different languages. There's so many implementations so the features have kind of diverged a bit from the original standard. Um, but there is a standard in the works now, it's called CommonMark, and it basically just unifies the features which are most commonly supported in all the different Markdown variants that have been developed over the years. And um, so I think there are two standards worth um, paying attention to. One of them is CommonMark, the other is of course GitHub itself. They're kind of behind common mark to an extent, but they've also added some extra features which are not in all the implementations. For example, tables. Um, if you want to format a table, you might have done something like this in the past where you just have to you put, put your headings, you put pipe symbols between the columns, put under, underlines under the headings just like you did with the section headings, things like that. This is sort of an intuitive way of specifying a table in an email, for example. Um, they also have task list, so these um, this particular syntax with the hyphen, the bracket, and then either an X or an empty space in between there, it can be rendered as a checkbox, either checked or unchecked. So, um, you know, with features like that, I think maybe Markdown could be the basis for arbitrary note-taking applications as well, not just for documentation. I would like to have an app that's available on all the platforms which stores notes with with um, plain text, um, images, checklists in line, something like um, something like Evernote for example, but less proprietary and, and I want to synchronize with cloud storage in the same way. But so far I've been looking for an editor that does that and a lot of them tend to look something like this. Either they just um, show you the a little bit of syntax highlighting or else they do the kind of a two-pane view where you get to edit the text but you also see a live preview. But most of them depend on a browser. They're implemented inside of a browser like with Electron or something like that. So it's really hard to find a lightweight one so far. So well I use VI sometimes. I've got syntax highlighting in there. But otherwise I thought I think I'd like to write a WYSIWYG editor and I think I'd like to be able to use Qt for that. So the first step is to be able to populate a Qt text document after parsing the markdown because that's the basis behind the Qt text edit in the widgets module and also the text edit in Qt quick. And then after you've got the document populated then the rendering ends up working the same as it turns out. So I need to find a markdown parser so I can do that. And actually there's a lot of them to choose from but I wanted one that's written in C or C++ and conforms to the common mark standard and it, and it should have table support definitely because that's really useful. It'd be nice to have the support for the checklist too. 
I found one on GitHub called MD4C, Markdown for C, which is MIT licensed and supports common mark and tables, but not the checklist, unfortunately. It's really simple, compact, plain C. So I think this is a good thing to put into uh, Qt as a third party module. So I wrote a patch to do that, and then I developed a series of patches to add a Qtext Markdown importer class, which uses that to populate the Qtext document. And I also modified the text widget or the text edit widget example to use that. So now if you run this example after my patches, you can actually import markdown text just as easily as you can support um, HTML and it actually renders almost the same. So now I'll show you that. This is uh, the text edit example. I'm going to load this example MD file, which is included in the patch actually. And you see it renders the same thing I had on my slide. The text uh, that I'm rendering looks like that. So in this case, instead of underscores, I'm using the alternate syntax for headings, which is where you use the hash symbols. A single hash means it's a level one heading. A double hash means it's, it's, it's an H2 heading and so forth. Um, and then you use um, you can do bold and italics and you can switch to monospace text by putting these um, triple backticks around the text. Uh, we have support for lists. So here's the typical symbols that people use and I just arbitrarily map them to the disk, the circle, and the square because those are the symbols that we support in QText document. So you see those are rendered over here. We also have support for the numbered lists and indentation of the lists. It actually sets the indent level in the Qtext document and then, well, there's a separate, a separate um, it's kind of hard-coded that an indent is always 40 pixels, but I think that's editable somehow. Um, images, well, first of all, there's the idea of links. So if you want to make a hyperlink, you specify the text that you want to show in square brackets and then the actual link in parentheses immediately afterwards. So that generates this hyperlink down here. And then if you want to use an image, that's just a hyperlink that starts with a bang. And then you can actually load images from the, based on the base URL. You can have relative paths underneath there, or you can use an absolute path URL if you want. Um, so tables, like I said, this MD4C actually supports those as well. And um, so there's the, the pipe syntax. I think the beginning and ending pipes are optional. But I wanted to, common mark specifies that if you pile up your pipes at the end like this, then that's supposed to mean that those cells are merged. And MD4C is not telling me that that happened. So what I did is I just looked for cells that have no text or that the string is completely empty and then merge those cells with their neighbors. So that's why this is, a, is actually a merged cell across three columns here. But notice these two are not merged. So since I wanted it to be like that, I just put a non-breaking space in there so that the, the string isn't completely empty, so it doesn't get merged. So that's the sort of clue I came up with for now, though I think maybe MD4C might get improved over time. I actually put in a feature request to support that feature. Um, okay, so this is the that example. Now if I run the same example without specifying the markdown file, by default, it loads an HTML file, and you'll see that you get almost the same thing. So the idea is to eventually be able to go round trip, that you could load HTML and then write it out to Markdown, or vice versa, load Markdown and write it out to HTML and be able to go back and forth. And we're not quite uh, there yet because, because I haven't written the mark. I haven't gotten very far with writing a Markdown writer yet, but I started it. It's just I ran out of time to finish it. Anyway, you can see that um, HTML and Markdown are ending up with similar features in this example. Oh, one of the other things I did, which I forgot to mention, is that um, the example in the past, you were able to use this drop-down box to change the style of whatever you're on, the line that you're on, but it wasn't showing feedback. Now it does. So it shows me this is a level 2 heading now because I changed it. It started out as a level 1 heading. 
and then you know this line is standard this one is a heading 2 this one is a bullet list with a disk symbol and so forth so if I add the markdown writing support then you'd be able to save this document and it would and then you'd reload it and it would be exactly the same I think that is going to work when I get the writer done okay then the next thing I thought I could maybe do is try to get this working in Git quick as well so I did that it wasn't too hard after getting the document populated so here's what the QML looks like I just have a text edit I set the text format to markdown text that's a new enum value and then um, yeah, I set the usual stuff I have to do this kind of hack to be able to load a file, file because QML doesn't have support for reading things from disk but you can fake it if you can do a git request with the file URL and then when that actually loads then it sets the text of the text edit so if we run this, I get very similar rendering to what we got with um, with the widget example. So that's basically it. Um, in summary, please vote for my project. I think that um, Markdown is much nicer to write than HTML, and I would really like to be able to use it in the future for a lot of different purposes and I think that there are other projects that will benefit from this a lot like um, email, email composing for example and of course the checklists the usual checklists and note taking and those kind of things like I mentioned already also just being able to edit your markdown files if you're using them for documentation somewhere so I think it would be a useful addition to Qt and I would hope to get this into DevBranch if somebody will be willing to review the patches um, thanks talk to you next time